Okay, folks, let's get started. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining me here at, at DrupalCon. Hope you've had an awesome week so far. So I'm going to talk today a little bit about the tools that we use for customer-facing marketing and how we can maybe think about repurposing and using those to improve the employee experience. First of all, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Hopefully, yes, it's working. So my name's Ruth Cheesy. My pronouns are she, her. I work full-time for Acquia as project lead for Mortic, and I'll tell you a bit more about Mortic in a bit. I'm going to be putting all of my slides and all of the resources that I mentioned up on my um, speaking website, which I'll tweet the link out later. So if you want to get the slides, they'll be shared there. So let's start with thinking about what we actually mean by the employee experience. It's yet another one of those buzzwords with experience on the end that you start hearing recently. Um, it's, it's about all of the experiences that happen between an employee and an employer. And the ones that I'm going to be talking about are predominantly the ones that happen in the digital space, but it actually covers much more than that. So we're just looking at a very small part of that. But the employee experience is, is gaining traction because it has direct improvements on engagement, productivity and sustainability in the business. And this comes from, this is a quote from the Willis Tower Watson Global Workforce Study, which is quite a popular study that they do every year. And we're going to be looking at that ag again in a minute. So I think all of you will agree, whether you're an employee, whether you're an employer, that the pandemic has really been a stress test for the employee experience. There's been lots of change in organisations. There's been full-scale restructuring. People have had to move to fully remote working. And some organisations who weren't previously fully digital have had to completely go through a, tra a digital transformation process to facilitate that happening. But even before the pandemic, employees were expecting more of their um, employers. So 56% of employees expect that their employer understands them as well as they are expected to understand the customer. But only 39% of the employees who were surveyed felt that their employer was actually meeting that expectations. So they're expecting that their employer knows more about them and can personalise their experience, but they don't actually feel that's happening. This was in 2017, before the pandemic, so this has only really got worse as the pandemic has, has moved forward. But change is coming. 92% of organisations that were surveyed have said that they are going to be in focusing on improving the employee experience as a top priority in, in the coming years. And that's significantly higher than it was pre-pandemic, so 52% pre-pandemic. But only 79% of them uh, say that, sorry, 79% of them don't actually feel ready and prepared with the tools that they need to be able to deliver this. And this comes from the 2021 employee survey. So this is recent information, recent data. There's a strong business case for improving the employee experience. <laughs> Because if you improve the employee experience, the research shows that you're likely to have, or the businesses that had, experienced 40% improvement in employee experience, 44% in culture, 35% in employee engagement, and 28% in well-being. So that's really quite considerable gains in a time where it's really challenging for businesses. And some of the impact on the bottom line 2.7% higher productivity in organisations who have invested and implemented improving their employee experience, and a 90% lower turnover. And in times where we're getting a phenomenal amount of change in any business, information like this is really going to make people set up, uh, stand up and listen. So it sounds like a great opportunity for all of us awesome people who are building amazing digital experiences with Drupal and tools like Mortic to think about how can we actually help with that because ultimately a lot of the experiences are happening online now. So surely we can bring our resources to bear and help these companies face these challenges. So a little, I'm assuming you all know what Drupal is, so I'm not going to bore you with that because I don't know as much as you do. But Mortic. Mortic is an open source marketing automation platform. It's written in PHP and based on Symfony, currently Symfony 4, but we're working on moving to Symfony 5. We're going to be doing some work tomorrow on the sprint. 
It powers Acquia's Campaign Studio product and also several other SaaS providers who provide Mautic as a hosted service. And it allows you to learn what your visitors are doing as they interact with your web properties, but also as they interact with your emails or your messages. And you can use that what you learn about them from those interactions, but also from the other systems that you currently use to hold information about those contacts to personalize how you communicate with them, not only through email, but also through lots of other channels, which we're going to talk about. We've got a great thriving community, heck of a lot smaller than Drupal, and much earlier on in our development than Drupal. Um, this was a photo from one of our community sprints in Budapest a couple of months ago. And yeah, we've got grand ideas. Predominantly, Mautic is used for marketers, but in this case, I'm going to give a bit of an idea of how it could be used else elsewhere. And Mautic and Drupal is quite a good combination because we do have the similar licensing. We're under GPL. We are based on Symfony, so if you've got developers who are already familiar with Symfony, they'll probably be able to jump in and get familiar with Mautic pretty quickly. <coughs> Like Dries was saying in his uh, keynote, it's so important that you have ownership of your own data, especially when it comes to marketing data or employee data. And with Mautic, you install it on your own servers if you want to, so you can manage where your data lives and where it goes. There's lots of integrations with Drupal and different ways to integrate with Drupal, but we also have integrations with CRMs, with other CMSs, with any other kind of application. We have a third-party ecosystem where people can create plugins and have things tied in with Mautic, and we have a fully open REST API as well. The digital experience sector is really growing, and Drupal is in a great place to deliver great digital experiences. Alongside Mautic, it gives you a really powerful package that you can provide to the customers. And if you love the Drupal community, hopefully you'll love the Mautic community. We are quite a bit smaller, but we are growing along similar lines. So that's why Mautic, why Drupal. So our employees are expecting more, and that's only going to be growing. Why not use the tools that we already have to imp improve that experience and support our employees? So what I'm going to run through are five ways to get started with automating the employee experience. There are lots of other ways, and these five ways might not suit you, but hopefully it will spark some ideas of like how you could think about using marketing tools to improve things internally. So one of the main challenges that businesses face, especially as they scale, is onboarding new employees and making sure that that is a really smooth process. With Mautic, we can provide a really streamlined process, not only through email, but also through other channels. So this is just an example of how we might consider employee-specific onboarding that's personalized to the employee using Mautic. So, hooray, we've hired someone. We've got a new joiner. Usually the first thing that we'll do, obviously they need to get into their email account, but is send them some useful information. I'm sure you can all remember when you first joined, you probably got information from loads of different places and sometimes it wasn't complete. But you can create an email that has the relevant information for that employee. So you could have basic information that everyone receives, and then in sections of that employee uh, information, you could create dynamic blocks that says, like, if they're in EMEA, have this content. If they're in the US, use this content. You can also translate those emails into different languages, so you're sending it in the right language for that person and provide lots of other information, or just keep it really minimal and give them links out to the resources that they need. We can also do some th things like if you have a training system, and you've all done probably the mandatory <laughs> security training and the what you can and can't do with all of your um, information, we can implement an integration into Mautic to add a tag or change the value of a custom field when they've completed their mandatory training, for example, and if they haven't completed it within the time frame, maybe a week, we can send them a nudge to say, look, you've got to get this completed. And that can all be coming through this workflow. And it doesn't only have to come by email. You could also put things on your intranet so that when they log in and they access the home page, maybe that's what opens when you open your browser, it will flash up a banner saying, don't forget you need to do your mandatory training and take them straight to the training resources. Maybe we have some well-being 
staff or services or health benefits that we want to make sure our employees are aware of, rather than sending them it, it we don't know if they've accessed it right if you just send the email but what we can do is say if they haven't accessed these pages on our website send them an email which gives them information about these things that they can access so you, if they've already accessed it you won't send it but if they haven't it might be something useful to to send and you could use that for any pages on your website so it doesn't have to just be well-being and then when we send emails we could further down the process be sending them something specific so if they are onboarding into a specific team and that team has specific information that they need to know about or something that they just need to be able to archive so they can come back to it you can but you can provide that information on their profile and then send them specific emails about the teams that they're onboarding into or the regions that they're onboarding into for example welcome to EMEA welcome to the US here are the key people and automate that but also, the whole process, you can use Mautic to send requests for feedback. So how are things going as you're onboarding through the company? Again, this could be by email. So you could send them an email after a week and say, hey, how's everything going? Hope your head's still above water. Here's some, if you need help, here's who to contact. But you could also do like a 30, 60, 90 day check-in and just say, hey, you've been here for a month, awesome. How's things going? Here's a couple of things you might want to access now that you've kind of got over drinking <coughs> from the fire hose in your first month. And also, at the end of this whole onboarding process, it's useful to get feedback for the HR team of, like, how was the whole process for you? Was there anything that you felt was missing? Was there anything that could be more culturally appropriate, for example? So all of this process can be automated. This looks like a bit crazy if you've never seen Mautic campaigns before, but this is all built in a drag and drop interactive campaign builder. And I'm going to take you through what each part of this campaign is doing. So on this bit on the side here, we're saying they join as a new employee and in 15 minutes we'll send them that first welcome email. And we'll also say, do they actually use an office? So when we create their profile, we can set on a field, are they in an office? Are they remote? Are they hybrid, for example? And we could send them the next day some tips on using the office. And you could even personalize that to say, if they're in Boston and they use an office, send the email with the Boston office information. If they're in Pune in India and they use an office, send the relevant information for Pune. And then if they don't, they're probably remote or hybrid. So we would send them a different email with information about what our, what our etiquette is with regards to working remotely, and some top tips and things like that, maybe allowances if they've got allowances to buy kit. The next line down, so we go from here, if they have not visited, so the red line means um, that they have not done something, if they haven't visited the wellbeing page within a couple of days, then we can send them that email and just say, hey, we've got all these amazing wellbeing things, or it could be, look, here's all the amazing special interest groups or employee resources groups that you might be interested in, in joining. This one is waiting three days, so you can see we've waited one, two, three, so they're basically getting an email each day. It's a basic drip campaign. Based on the region, we can send them e email information about that specific region. And then at the end of the week, we can say if they haven't completed the training, plus one day, so on the eighth day, send them an email to say, hey, if you don't do the training, you're going to be locked out of your system or whatever you do. And then up here is where we were saying about the feedback. So again, we're doing feedback at 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and then at the end of the um, whole process, asking them for feedback on the onboarding. And all of this can also be set to respect your employee's time, because it's really annoying when you're a new employee and you start getting emails outside of working hours, sometimes you feel like you should really respond. Well, in Mautic, you can actually say, only send emails between 9 and 5, and only send them on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So if it was set, something happened on the um, Saturday or something happened on the Friday and it had to wait two days, it wouldn't send the email on the Sunday. It would send the email on the Monday and it would be held in a queue until it's sent. 
So another way that we can do this, as well as having that onboarding process, is centralizing newsletters that are sent out from a business. So quite often what you'll find is uh, business units or teams will be like, we need to send a newsletter, we'll use MailChimp, they'll use SendKit, they'll use something else. With Mautic, what you can do is centralize that and allow your employees to go to one place, a preference center, and see all of the mailing lists that you have available. It might be special interest groups, it might be product update news, you might have news from specific business units or parts of the business, and allow them to choose which ones they want to, to use. So it reduces the challenge of trying to find where those emails are and how do I get on them and what have you. But it also s allows them to self-select if they don't actually want to receive product news anymore. They can just go and unselect themselves. The way, we, the way we work with Mautic is by default, um, when you create lists with recall segments, they are private, so they're not uh, editable by the user, only editable by the admins. So only the admins can subscribe and unsubscribe. But we have an option over here where you can actually say, yes, this is visible in the preference center. So it allows you to say, yeah, this, this list is something that the user can choose to be in or choose not to be in. And we have a public name, so you could call this boring, annoying news about product, but call it product news, and that's what the, the uh, employee sees. Um, so this allows you to set up that kind of interface so that all of your parts of your business that want to send information to the rest of the business in nice, well-formatted, easy-to-read emails can do that through Mautic. And it might look something like this. So this is just a very simple template that I've used, but you get the gist. All of the available lists are here, and they can choose which ones they want to receive, and then contact them if there's any problems. The other thing you can do with this, which I've not shown here, is sometimes people actually prefer to receive it by text message. So you could give them the option to say, actually, I'd rather receive this by S receive communications by SMS with a link to the resource, and they can decide if they want to receive it through different channels, for example. Okay, so dynamic email content. I've sort of mentioned this in passing, but what this allows you to do is have one email and then have chunks of that which is customized and tailored. So the way this works is we create a, a block in the email and then decide the variations that we want to have. So here we would have default content, which would just be here's a few news stories. But we can also tailor it to say variation one would be news from EMEA. Variation two would be from the US and what have you. And all we do is we filter the contacts by a field on their profile, for example. So if the region is set to EMEA, they'll receive this block. If it's set to the US, they'll receive another block. So you're creating one email with chunks that have different content. And that's dynamically replaced when the email is sent based on the information on the, on the employee's profile. And it doesn't just have to be text. You can have videos, you can have images, you can replace all kinds of sections in the emails with this. And when you're building the email, it looks like this. So it's a, ri a rich text. What you see is what you get editor with drag and drop. And we just create that this is an image hero, this is some basic text, news from your region, and this is where I've inserted a dynamic content block. So it tells you there's dynamic content there, and you can then go in and edit it. So it's a nice way of simplifying the process. You can also use it. For example, if you wanted to do a, a, the same email in multiple languages, you could say this block is in English and this block is in s for people who are in Spain and this block is for people who are in India and use it that way rather than doing a full translation. That's another way that, that you can use the dynamic content. So hopefully everyone's with me so far. It's a bit of a whistle-stop tour. Um, nudges and alerts. So I mentioned when when you've got a contact or an employee who's going through that onboarding process and at some stage they need to do something and that hasn't been done yet, we can use Mautic to send the message to them in whatever channel is the most appropriate for us to send it to. So I mentioned a bar. So this is a bar that you could show on the top of the intranet, for example. If you're using Drupal to power your intranet, you can just add it as a um, focus item with a block. And that will automatically show when a particular condition is met. And if they click through and they complete, it will go again, because the tag would be removed and they would be, they've completed. You could use that for anything. OKRs are not done on time, show something like that. 
as long as you can track it on the employee profile, you can show items like this. This one would be really useful to, it's a pop-up that would take up the whole screen when you go onto the website, like one of those annoying splash screens. But it's quite useful if there's an important message that you need to get out to everyone. But it would be very frustrating to, for everyone in the company to see that kind of message if they're not in that location. So what we can do is say only show that if they're based in Boston and they use an office. And then we'll pop this up once until they cancel it, get the message across. And this is the alternative way that I mentioned to getting feedback from the employee about how the onboarding process is going. You could send an email, but you could also pop something up and say, just fill in this basic form. And then that form result would go to HR or go into a system that you're using and submit the feedback that way. In a lot of organizations, there's also a need for a comprehensive um, crisis communications plan. So if something happens and you need to contact all your employees quickly or a group of employees quickly, you can also do that with Mortic because we can send emails, we can send um, SMS and pop-ups. So something like this, a, a reminder to tell people that the office is closed, or it could be that there's been some kind of incident and you need to let everybody know. So that could be unpublished as a campaign, ready to go if you need it, as part of your planning for any emergencies in the business. Okay, and then the final one is a customized intranet. So this allows you to personalize the content that you show on your website, on perhaps Drupal website, relevant to the individual employee. So a simple way we could do this when we have someone who's just starting is to have a simple greeting that says, hey, welcome to the company, it's great to have you join us, and only show that within the first two weeks or within the first month or something like that. The way this works is we create a div on the website and we push the content into the div that's matching that name based on whatever filters it is. So if we know that they've joined the new employee segment within the last 30 days, show this in that grid. And if they're not in that group, show something else. So it's a very simple way to start personalizing the homepage or the website or the intranet um, using Mortic. But there's also ways you could use this kind of technology and this kind of way of thinking with existing employees. For example, benefit information is probably different for different regions. So rather than having to list everything and having people search through, you could just decide to say, show this block for stuff that's relevant for Europe, show this block for stuff that's relevant for the US. Linking to region-specific tools. So in the company I work for, we have a different annual leave and payroll system in my region to what's used somewhere else in the business. Linking to things like travel booking if it's different for different people. And also, as you go through the business and you become more senior, there's probably other resources that are more relevant and important for you to access. So we can use dynamic content to do that. If we know the level of seniority in the business on their profile, we can use that to pull in uh, relevant information and show that on the internet. And finally, time sensitive resources. So if there's something you need to show for a particular period of time or when particular conditions are met, we can replace blocks of content on the website, either images, text, whatever, um, using a campaign and push that into your, into your website. So cl some closing thoughts from me. We are really well positioned to support organizations with improving their um, employee experience using the tools that we probably are already using externally. And improving this experience is a really rapidly growing area which is well worth exploring. I do encourage you though to start with um, what we call crawl, walk, run. So start with small things. It might be bringing all of the um, newsletters that your company sends out into one place and allowing people to then decide what they want to receive and then start to look at, okay, how can we translate those emails? How could we use dynamic content to alter what's actually going out in the emails? And iterate and see what works for you. And then finally, I think, with anything like this, when you're going through a process of digital transformation, creating a strategy and plan of how you're going to do that and how you're going to interact and work and collaborate across the business with the different areas of the business is also really important for, for success. So if you want to know any more about 
the Mortic community or you want to get involved maybe and come and see what we're doing, uh, we are going to be running a contribution sprint tomorrow in the contribution rooms. So yeah, Drupal and Mortic contributions. And it would be great to, to hear from you. Please use the session feedback in the app if it's working. I know it's been a bit problematic for some people. Apparently, if you log in and log out, it works better. And yeah, any questions? Anything that I can answer about Mortic or the improving the employee experience? Got one over here. Hello. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Which one just now? Hi. Hi. Um, so a lot of your um, first ideas were about emails mm -hmm. and my company is really trying to reduce the amount of emails that we're sending to associates yeah so I'm just interested about your thoughts and ideas about that how do you communicate other than email do you use we have an intranet with targeted news for example uh-huh and we're trying to use that as much as possible to more mirror the experience in our personal lives of going to a feed for example yeah Good question. Um, I think maybe it would be more appropriate then to look at the other ways of communicating with the bars or the pop-ups because that's another way of drawing attention to something that maybe needs to be done or that there's a new item that's of relevance and also personalizing that process so that when they go to their landing page on the intranet they're seeing things that are relevant to them which may not be something that's so easy for Mortic to help personalize. That's probably something that you could do within Drupal itself or with some kind of CDP to lo know more about your users? Yeah, we're not using Drupal, but I like the pop-up idea. I don't think we can do that with our tools. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. And the pop-up idea is also nice if you don't want to be plaguing people with emails for things like feedback. So if you want to just get quick information from people, it's a nice way to do that. But you can, you can use it without people also. Yeah. The focus items is platform agnostic. So you can either use an integration with the CMS or you can just copy the line of JavaScript and paste it onto the page. So it could go on any any kind of page that you wanted it on, a landing page or anything like that. I've got a related question. Um, can you feed into Slack or other yes. chat message not form yeah. type things? Yeah, yeah, you can. So not in core. But there's a third party ecosystem just like there is in Drupal. And there is an integration that I know of that allows you as part of a campaign to push a message into Slack. Or yeah, I guess you could extend that to use other tools. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm Björn. And just uh, we, we moved to this remote work. So uh -huh. actually lots of people are not meeting each other anymore, just maybe once a month or two in the month. So I asked myself how to catch emotions. So what's, yeah. uh, so what's really missing is like if you have a, a talk about your, pro to about your project or some code or something, it's just but you don't feel these emotions if you're not in touch with the people personally. Yeah. So how, how do you catch emotions uh, with, your, if, if you with your team or if you're in technical connection? Good question. Good question. I don't know, actually. Do you have any thoughts on that? Not really. So I think maybe <laughs> we have dinners once a week or something, but during work, it's really hard to, to get in touch with, with the people personally. Y yeah, yeah. Emotionally. I mean, I think I've seen from a management perspective, having the option, when you have stand ups and things, having the option to ask people how they're doing and how they're feeling. Um, I don't know if how that would relate so much to Maltec. I mean, you could do that by email, but I don't know if that's the most appropriate wet tool for the job, you know. So, but it's, yeah, it's a good question because that's also a real big part of the well-being side of em employee experience, especially in the remote. I work fully remotely, so, yeah. Any more questions? Right. So uh, I worked with Mautic before and mostly everyone was like using it for marketing automation only. Uh -huh. So I'm thrilled like as, and confused as well. So uh, what happens to contacts and companies like Ma Mautic is so much uh, like, you know, designed for that purposes only. Mm -hmm. So how do we like mold it for this new use case? So can you give a bit of an idea like employees, a contact 
or employees a user in motec yeah and what happens to the companies are, are yeah. is it going to be still there in this use case or not yeah good question so employees would be contacts yeah um, users in Mautic are like your admin users that you would have in Drupal. They're people who can administer and manage the Mautic instance. So employees would come in as contacts, and therefore they're people that you can communicate with. And I would probably not use the, con the companies section. You wouldn't really need to use company association. You could repurpose it for something else, but I would probably wouldn't use it. And then I would use segments, which is the wet, what we call lists, to chunk those contacts down into things that are relevant for your business. So it might be all of EMEA or all of the whole company, or it might be just exec team or by business unit and so forth. Um, assets could be resources that you want to share with those contacts. So in Mautic, we have assets which can be tracked. So you can see how much people are interacting and downloading them or what they're actually, yeah, where they're getting those assets from. So that's another thing that you could use there. And I've mentioned the focus items and dynamic content as well. Um, Mautic does have a point system, which we use in marketing words for like figuring out who are the most active, most likely to convert. You could also use that for the most digitally engaged employees, perhaps. And then that could help you bring together focus groups of people if you're looking at digital transformation both people who are high point scoring because they engage with you a lot or low point scoring and they don't to give you more feedback on this whole process of digital transformation. So that's just off the top of my head. That might be an option as well. Okay, thanks for that. Just uh, like one or two more. Uh, yeah. So like now uh, like uh, the human resource team that will log in into Mautic and control everything. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, does Mautic have a like a functional Slack plugin so that we can push notification to Slack as well? Yes, that's what someone at the back just asked. Yeah, there is a it's a third party plugin, um, but also there's things for like all kinds of things like web um, WhatsApp and all the different t tools that are out there, Telegram, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and we just have to do a one time uh, pushing of employee data from internet internet to Mautic, and then <laughs> we are all set. Yeah, or you could just set up a synchronization so that it would update in real time. You can. There are lots of plugins already that do that with sales tools, and there are some that do it with more HR-focused tools. Um, but if you've got a bespoke system, we've got a REST API, so you could actually build a plugin that does that. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we have questions from the app. Okay. Uh, Nico asked. <laughs> At what company size does it make sense to have a Mautic system for employee communications? Yeah, I guess it, it also depends on the kind of communications that you're doing. But I would say once you get more than about 20 to 30 employees, maybe, that, at that kind of level, you're wanting to be more thinking about how you're engaging people with what's going on across the business. Um, but it's more about how you're communicating and what your needs are, really, in terms of do you need things like the, the focus items and stuff like that. Another one is we have active campaign for newsletters, but do not track audience at all because our stakeholders think it is evil. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, this is internal, so tracking seems okay. But do you get any concerns about tracking? Um, you don't have to track in Maltic, or you can put it behind, uh, as you should normally put it behind a consent thingy um, that says yes, and then the tracking script loads. So part of the tracking script for Mautic is used to render forms, which is a necessary piece of script. That doesn't actually track, it just deals with the forms, and a separate part deals with the tracking. So if it's a concern, you could just not use the tracking. Obviously, then you won't get the information about whether they have or haven't accessed resources. And likewise, when you send emails, you can turn off tracking the links in the emails as well. So you don't have to track. So if it's, a, if it's a concern for your business, you could just not have those features and functionality. And obviously, you then wouldn't be able to use the, the, the decisions that are based on those actions. Right, cool. Anyone else? Yep. I'm running to you. <laughs> Making you work out by going from one side to the other. Yeah. 
Um, I was wondering um, how Motec also uh, collaborates with uh, tooling like, for example, Google Forms or, uh, or other things, because I was thinking about the evaluation process mm -hmm. is at this moment very manually and with a lot of stakeholders, uh, but we also need to um, include um, things like a Google Form to evaluate and to, um, yeah, it's a link that we need in the communication. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing. And maybe also, for example, with Google Excels, that we can, um, th that Motic can automatically um, yeah, track data and put it in Excel if we have a received an answer or not. Uh, so those are. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that's two questions, isn't it? So the one about Google Forms. So if you want people to just go fill in the Google Form, you can just send a link in the email to a Google Form. But if you want to get the data out of the Google form, is that what you mean, and push it into Mautic, or? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think so. What you're suggesting is that you need to create a Google form automatically, and then send that to someone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, most of the time you would just use a MORTIC form. If it's the same questions that you're asking, there's also dependent form questions. So you could say, what region are you? Select a region, and then it would only show the relevant questions for that region. So I don't know that you'd need to create a new form for every thing. Like, you might create a new form for every campaign you do. Um, and then you can embed that form on your website. You can embed it on a landing page that you create in Mautic, for example, and then send the link to that and they fill it in. In terms of integrating with Google Sheets, we've done that really successfully with Zapier or NAN or Integromat or Make, I think they're called now, uh, where someone fills in a form on the Mautic instance and it automatically updates a Google Sheet. And you can also search the Google Sheet, pull that information back in and put it into a Mautic form field, for example. Um, so we used that in our last Mautic conference to do swag coupons for our swag store. We had a spreadsheet of lists. We went to see if they'd claimed it already, and if they hadn't, we pulled a code out and pushed that into Mautic and then used that to send them an email, which was a personalized email because that code was unique to them. Is that, does that answer the question? So it is possible. That bit you have to do with some kind of external automation, um, like Zapier or NAN. Anyone else? Any more questions? Going once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, do you have final say? Do you have final words? Uh, I don't have any final words other than drop me an email if you have any questions. I'm on Slack or wherever as Arch Easley. And I'm going to be around. I'll be on the Acquia stand for a little while after this. And then um, tomorrow I'll be here all day. So do come and say hello if you're interested in knowing more about Motic. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much.